Yep. We're done. Almost. Well, we're 95% done. Something like that. Hey, everybody. Welcome to part 8 of the Y-Wing build. Uh, yeah, we're very nearly almost there. Let's give you a quick flip of the underside. Reality is, you know, with these video builds, I barely get enough time to do the editing because of work and real life and things like that. But look, 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 look. All that effort was definitely worth it. Genuinely was worth it. I'm happy with that. Happy with that. So, I've just got the, the stand to do. There's a couple more bits and bobs to do here with this fella. Like doing the um, the astromech heads. I've still got to do all that yet. But we're, yeah, we're there or thereabouts. I'm not far off. Anyway, right. Before we get crack in with carrying on with the, the painting of the fuselage that was completely the wrong shade of grey. And we'll do some more detail painting around it and things like that. Um... At the time I'm recording this part right now, this introduction, I am just shy of 1,000 subscribers. What? Uh, I am just shy of 88,000 views. What? Um, genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so, so much. Um, and thank you as well for your patience. I know that you know the episode uploads at the moment are slowing down again. Uh, again, work and real life are interrupting you know, the building side of things. But genuinely, when I first started doing this kind of thing, I expected to get 100 views, full stop. I expected, you know, 8 subscribers, and, you know, 7 of those were supposed to be family. You know, that kind of thing. So, to be just shy of 1,000 and just shy of 88, uh, yeah, 1,000 subscribers, 88,000 views, just shy. Um, you know, absolutely blown away. Thank you. I can't find the words to, you know, explain it properly, but genuinely, thank you. Uh, right, I'll stop twaddling because I'm filling up again now. Um, yeah, I know, I know, I'm getting quite emotional about it. It's like that, but it's a good emotional. It's good emotional. This is happy. This is happy. So, uh, yeah, sit back, relax, and I'll yeah, faff my way through this again. Yeah, faff. <laughs> Clear all those out of the way. Let's clear the background of the time a little bit. My frothy coffee in shot. So I'm going to take some of these uh, Vallejo paints again. Now, I do believe these are from the Luftwaffe, Luftwaffe, Luftwaffe um, paint set. So you've got 71046, which is pale blue grey. 71128, which is grey violet. And that's that funny. Uh, it's like a, a lilac grey kind of thing, I think. I think that's the one. Used to see it on the A10s during the late 80s. It's a beautiful colour. And then we've got the RLM 78 blue. 71101. This is, um, it's like the underwing. Uh, that funny light like, grey blue that they used to have on the, the Fockables and Messerschmitts during the Battle of Britain. I'm literally going to start with that hell blue. So we're just going to have some details now. So again, not masses. I'm just going to take a fairly small detail brush, plum twist your brush to a point again through the paint, like so. I'm literally now going to pick out some greeblies. So I've come away from all that nonsense in the background. Try to sort this lighting out. Yep, I definitely press record this time. <laughs> I did an entire clip the other day of painting and I forgot to press record and I was not happy. So we've not sealed any of this in yet with varnish. This is literally, what, call it 22 hours later, after doing all the painting we were doing in that last clip. You're about to hear a vacuum in a second. So it's literally just picking out little areas of interest. There we go. <sighs> Why? Just 
just to lighten everything up a little bit. Let's zoom in up to say that. Now don't worry about the, the stark contrasts at this stage. This is literally just adding small details to distract your eye away from what is potentially just two shades of grey at the moment with a couple of bits of uh, shadowing. So it's just going to catch your eye every now and then. And so once we get the, the washes on, it'll tone most of this back down anyway. Just do that one there and then. Yeah. Cause there's something down here. Down there. Oops. Shall be for your paintings only. Again, I'm not speck specking, 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 um, spe specific colours. Oh my. What's in a vodka? Yeah, this is literally just a few things that I'm throwing on just to break up the, the colours. Add a little bit of interest. Good job there. I don't worry about. I've done a little bit of overspill just there. We'll come back with uh, another colour in a few moments. Just touch that in. And there are some decals that will go on here. There's a couple of markings that go on these sections just here. But that'll come after we've gloss varnished and before we do the washes. So don't forget we need to weather decals in as well. Let's uh, get that panel there. This is really therapeutic. And this is one of the reasons why I love this hobby so much. If I wasn't filming this build right now, I would have my earphones in, I'd have my favourite music playing, and I would be shut off completely from the rest of the world. And all the nonsense of today would be slipping away. Very, very nicely indeed.
There you go, it's on some of these flatter details, I'm not actually going in and painting these edges. I'll leave that as it is, but on these big lumpy ones, I'll fill them in. Um. This one here. Don't forget, this is your model. You can do this any way you want to. These are just basic techniques. And these are the basic techniques that the ILM guys would have used. And don't forget, back then, they would not have been worrying about screen accuracy. Because they were literally making this up as they went along. Over budget. Behind schedule. Not really knowing what they were getting into. Well, these are the techniques that I've been using. And at the time they would not have been worrying about screen accuracy because they didn't know what screen accurate was. So put yourself in their shoes. Pretend you're over budget, behind schedule. You've got somebody leaning over your shoulder saying, right, we need to film this scene. Where's my model? Where's my prop? You said this would be done two weeks ago, where is it? Let's use a different colour now. So, quick colour change. We need the grotty old pot of X20A. And we'll use. Let's try that grey violet, see what that's like. And we'll pick a slightly different brush, a slightly bigger brush, even. A bigger head. So let me see what I've got in my pot. Let's try that fella. So it's slightly bigger, it's uh it's more of a hello, uh, my lighting's falling over again. So it's more of a, a broader brush now. We'll get that grey violet and figure out where that decal goes. So it looks like Cover most of that there. Oh god, that's a snotty colour. Oh, that is a grotty colour. Look at that one. That's possibly a bit too dark for what we need it to do. So, what we'll do is we'll use that for some more detail painting. So, I'm going to swap back to that small brush that I had a minute ago. This one off. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll be back in a minute. Want some really tiny details. Let's try that one there. Pikachu. Hello. Tony, you're breaking the law. Why am I breaking the law? 
My stepson's texting me saying I'm breaking the law. I've probably eaten an Easter egg too early. It's probably his. Everything there. Details like so. I spotted one before that was absolutely perfect and I can't find it again now. Hate it when that happens. So I say don't go overboard with it, just pick out little details here and there.
you, know, you don't have to stick to these little bottles that I'm using. If you're using the Tamiya paints, yeah, have a bit of a play, mix some colours together. Uh, kind of like I did with the, the base coat itself, you know, when I mix the, the white in with the grey and then yeah, add black to it, add blue to it. Add a few bits of green to it, see what you can come up with. Make some interesting shades. Have a play. Which is exactly what the ILM guys would have done. There's a couple of holes there. Like so. The whole point of it is to break up the colours a little bit. Just move your eye around the model rather than you know, just taking in one slight massive one colour or a couple of you know, tonal variations of the same colour. Give your viewers something to have a look at. Take their eyes through a journey. And this one here will be absolutely ideal for when we add the washes. And the weathering, it's got a couple of, uh, couple of lovely panels to grab onto. I'm going to choose a slightly different colour as well in a moment. Just do a few little bits and bobs. Don't forget as well, we've got the, the scorch mark coming down this side in a minute. So, I'll tell you what, let's get one of those uh, German army canisters. From the gas mask, uh, the gas mask canister, I think it was. I'm going to show you something quite interesting in a moment. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've all seen the well-known photographs of the ILM studio and the Tammy kits that you've just been knocking about in the background. These, these like racks and racks and racks of the stuff. And if you look at this Hanamag kit here, these are the figures from the Hanamag SKD something something two five one something stuff like that. Just here we've got a stamp that says 1973. So this is the kind of kit that would have been in that stash that they had. Now if we have a look here, these are the gas mask canisters from a 135th scale series of figures, as you can see there. I mean, if I just twist that one off, and I shouldn't really twist that off. I tell people off for doing that. If I grip this in my clamping tweezers, so bear in mind that's 135th scale. Okay, we've got a 172 scale prop. We're not that far away from the actual scale of this model. So it looks like going off the scale up kind of thing. This thing, when they made it, would have roughly been 148 scale. Possibly 143rd. It could have even been 135th scale going off the size of that. Right, so this engine thing here, uh, I love how they've done that. They give you a right angle spliny thing there. Spliny thing, I know, very technical. So you can only go on one way. It's completely different on the opposite side. Uh, I can't quite remember what it looks like on the opposite side, but they've done the same again with where the engine pods attached to. Um, there's all kinds of different little angles and things like that, and it's it's like this way round, stupid. So you can't get these things wrong. It's brilliant. I love how they do that. Right. So, not swaddling. Get on with it, Tony. 
uh, this engine thing. We've got these little grey panels added. Uh, we'll do some detail painting on that in a second, like we did with the fuse lance itself. But this... I don't even know what to call that. But we've got a nozzle there. I'm actually going to colour that all in the same one. So, same one, same one, same shade. Oh, use your words, Fairclough. So I'm going to go with quite a dark grey, so I'm going to go with dark sea green. Because why not? So it's like really dark grey green colour. And we're going to see what that looks like once we get it on. If nothing else, we can use this as a base coat for a metal of some kind, if we need to. It's not a huge problem. So I'll actually just go into brush paint this on. No airbrush this time. Just whack it in. We're not even in shots, are we? Oh dear. Oh dear. So I'm not too worried about this big lip here because that's actually hidden by the, the pods. The pods actually grip onto that, so I'm not too worried about that. Grab that rim there. But again, we're not too worried about this part because that's goes in there. So we don't need to worry too much about that. So we're just going to very gently run round, grab all this. So, a little bit of slapdash, that's okay. It'll help with the weathering. Once we get there, so let's pop that to one side to dry. Yeah, pop that back in there. We need to be a bit more careful with this one. I don't actually want to take any of these little panels off. Because knowing me, I'll forget which way around they go. So we're going to start at the top here. Don't worry if it's going on too snotty or anything like that. We can come back with another coat, it's not a problem. You don't forget you don't have to fill it all in in one go. So I'll do some lovely dry brushing over the top of that later. With some kind of metallic. I'm going to catch that in there now. Imagine a potter's wheel. Instead of trying to brush all the way around, literally put your brush on and turn the piece. Just take control of it, don't go too fast. You're in control. So. And again, we'll pop that off one side to dry. Oh, I'm quite on you, then. concentrating. some uh, greebly details like we did with the fuselage.
too wide. Just about right. Bottom, work our way around. Like so, just to give us a rough edge. And obviously, if you don't have any of this really narrow tape, then We can use some of this stuff. Yeah, it's roughly the, the width of normal tape. Just put you down onto the desk. Grab yourself a ruler. And train yourself for length. Now, I put you onto the desk, and you probably saw it go like a, a flat colour. So, if you do that again, come here. So if you do it like so, you can see it doesn't go anywhere near as clear as that has. Once you smooth it down, you should be able to see the difference between the colours. That's how you know it's on and it's sticking. Put it down like this, what will happen is it will actually take some of the adhesive off when you remove it, which will stop pulling paint away. Because so I've done that in the past with uh, Tamiya tape. I've put it on without taking any of the attack off and then next thing you know I pull the layer of paint away. Not the happiest of feelings that one. So I'm just going to take this piece which is trimmed away and I'm going to try and follow as closely as I can that tape there. I've trimmed it short so it's a little bit more pliable than a full piece. I should be able to follow quite closely the narrow tape. I'm just going to use the back edge of a knife to move that into position and then smooth it down. And try and follow some of these lumps and bumps as well just to prevent uh, breathe through, bleed through even. I'd say it should be at this kind of width pliable enough for us to do that. Now do be careful there's a sharp cutty edge right next to your thumb. as well, like so. So I'll do one like this and I'll do one with the decals just to give you an idea of how that's done. Doing it like this will give you that more ILM look, it'll give you that uh, sprayed on, it looks like it belongs kind of finish to it. I'll tell you what, that wasn't a bad guess with that tape. That was pure luck. I got three quarters of the way around it and the little man in the back of me is saying you're going to have to cut another piece. You've naffed it. So we pull this away. So we should have close enough to straight line that we can work with that. Might need the odd tweak here and there, but very gently does it. But I'm happy enough with that. Now when we spray this we'll go across that seam, not that seam, that tape, so that we're not 
overspraying underneath. And then we'll add the rest of the tape over the top here, like so. And forget to cover any gaps as closely as you can. And get the rest of it in like that. Pretty much close. Like so. Like I said, we'll blow across this way. So let's get the airbrush set up. Uh, so taking that same gold yellow that we used on the yellow stripe for the cockpit, which is that one there. We we'll literally need two or three drops, if anything. So on this Iowa uh, Neo for Iowa, yeah, whatever that's called. This new thing, that one, Neo for Iowa. It's literally one, two, three drops, no more. Let's test the flow. Test the flow, and then get some scrap underneath. To protect your work surface, so that will do. Big little poly bag with loads and loads of shine on it. Sort the shine out, there we go. So, like I say, we're going to blow across that tape, not this way underneath it, because what will happen is if there is any gaps in the tape there, it will bleed through underneath. So, it's literally nice and gently over the top. And this way we can actually fade the paint on and give it a more natural worn look than the detail would appear. So just build it up nicely so we've got a kind of battle worn look to it. You'll see that in a second or two. There's some more there. So you've still got quite a fair amount of paint in the bottom of that cup. Now if we wanted to, that would take care of the second nose cone. Shush. That would take care of the second nose cone if we really really wanted to do both at the same time. So that gives you an idea, if you are doing both, you really don't need that much paint to do this. So I'm just going to bring the airbrush back in, cut to air only. You can see the back of my hand, no paint coming through. So it's just literally going to splash that coat off. It's not going to dry completely. So there is still a danger that if you handle this too much, the heat and moisture on your skin will reactivate that paint. So we do need to be very careful at this stage. Just fine, there it is. Just find that and then very carefully peel the tip away. And find that edge there. That'd be nice. So we've got a more natural looking yellow line, even though it's slightly wonky, which is something I really don't care about anyway. That's how you would do it. Obviously, you, you're going to take more time and do that a lot more slowly than I've just done. I'm pressed for time. It gives you a slightly worn effect rather than the stark wallop, here I am yellow, of a decal. Which I will demonstrate to you in a second or two. Alright, let's give all that sealing with... Uh with some gloss varnish. Any gloss varnish will do. It has to be gloss though. So that we can do the the panel line washes after. Or if you're going with the gunk wash, uh, you'll need gloss varnish as well. So let's 
just going to turn the, uh, the extractor on for this. Mm, if I can find the button, where's the button? There's the button. There we go, that's where we're up to at the moment, and yeah, as you can see, it's oh, yeah, yeah, we've done that, we did that in the introduction. Right, I'll give you a quick teaser now, just plonk him out of the way. Quick teaser, Bob Fat's well underway. Oh, he says dropping off his stuff. So we've got all the gunk wash still drying slightly on the bodywork, um, we've got part of a mush, and we've got another part of a mush somewhere. Where is that gone? Sorry, smacking your head again. Eh, what's that I was going to show you? Oh, yeah, there he is. His, his face is in bits. Yeah, he's got measles. Yeah. So, he's cracking on. He's cracking on. Uh, I've just started editing the first couple of episodes together. So, yeah, we're getting, there. we're getting there. Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. That's all you're going to see of that one. Yeah, you know who you are. Right, so... There we go, just bring this fella back in. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to deliberately leave it there just to annoy you all. <laughs> um, no, the reality is with the editing and how the editing all works together and things like that, uh, I've run out of time on the video. It's going to go carry on into you know well over an hour and a half, and even I can't sit through that. So, just to give you an idea of what we're doing, this fella here, if I can find the right button for zooming, that's the one we painted in that previous clip before we did all the gloss varnishing, which will match up with this paint here. So it's the exact same shade, the exact same process of doing the yellow over the white. And if I compare that with the decal, uh, which you can't quite tell in this shot right now, I've seen back out again, there is a definite difference. That one's definitely brighter than this one, that's more of a lemon colour. This is more mellow. Mellow. Yeah. Uh, that don't know it's Friday um, so we'll leave that there next episode we'll come back we'll do this decal here show the people Tony do this de de <laughs> decal here and we'll carry on with something else I think it'll be that episode where I address the you know, it's the wrong shade of grey thing and we'll completely adjust it and just to let you know all the detail painting we did in that previous uh, previous bits, I think it was the start of this episode, you still see some of it down here. Ooh. So I'm going to a pointy, a pointy thing, so I've got some, ooh, what's that? That's gross. So I've got some there, and you can see that the panel's completely different, and so is this one. So it still shows through, There's like this thing here, and that one, and that. So when you do actually look around, it's a lot more subtle than than we did at the beginning of the video but it still takes your eye around a little journey so it's not just one massive grey you know grey it's not footage at all is it <sighs> I'm gonna go for a lie down as always thank you for watching I don't know why my little thing's not working work thank you thanks for watching uh, thank you so much for your patience I know it's uh, getting increasingly further apart with the videos at the moment but there's just that much going on at work it's crackers, and I've barely got enough time to do anything at the moment. But thank you for your patience, thank you for sticking with me. I am this close to a thousand subscribers. By the time you actually see this video, I would have hit that thousand mark, and it's completely mind-blowing, and I genuinely can't thank you guys enough. I love you.